Ja, dann ähm, beginne ich mit einem herzlichen Willkommen im Bauhaus Reuse zu dem Symposium Funktionalismus und Bauhaus, das hier zunächst im Rahmen der Triennale der Moderne stattfindet, ähm, 2019 in Berlin und ebenso im Rahmen des Festivals Re Bauhaus. Und ähm, jetzt ähm, werden wir Folgendes machen, dass ich ins Englische switche, ähm, weil wir haben äh, versuchen, das für eine Aufzeichnung später konsistent zu halten. Und ähm, die Übersetzung mit unserem Dolmetscher beginnt dann ab den deutschsprachigen Vorträgen ab 15 Uhr. So, ähm, ja. Und wir haben nämlich auch ähm, tschechischsprachige Gäste und deswegen ist unsere gemeinsame Sprache dann heute Englisch. Ja, yeah, so welcome again to the Symposium Functionalism, Functionalism and Bauhaus in the Bauhaus Reuse here um, on Ernst Reuter Platz. Um, the Symposium is part of the Triennale der Moderne, I don't translate that, a weekend in Berlin 2019. And... Um, Uh, also part of the Rebauhaus Festival, um, Rebauhaus Emancipation Education Exchange. This is a festival we are doing together with the Goethe Institute and with partners from Czechoslovakia, uh, Czech Republic. The Czech Republic, yeah, there was too much Czechoslovakia in this, in this preparation because we were always talking about the interwar period and there's of course Czechoslovakia, so I'm completely mixed up, I'm sorry. Uh, the Czech Republic and um, uh, Germany and with three locations in, uh, in Prague, in the, Czech, um, in the National Gallery in Prague, in, uh, in um, Ostrava, in, um, also in the Czech Republic in the corner of uh, Poland, Slovakia and uh, Czech Republic and here um, finally in Berlin in the, in the Bauhaus Reuse. Um, I, I'd like to um, uh, take the chance to introduce my co-curator for this um, Re-Bauhaus um, um, uh, festival beside um, also Marek Pokorny from Ostrava, Helena Dudova. She is um, a curator of the architecture ex uh, collection of the uh, uh, National Gallery in Prague. And um, myself, I'm uh, Robert Huber. I'm, so to say, the director here of the Bauhaus Reuse and managing partner of Zukunftsgeräusche in GBR. We are the, the architects and also the operators of this um, new center here on Ernst Reuter Platz. And I'd like the chance also to introduce my colleague, Peter Winter, my office partner. He's not here at the moment. He's probably doing something good for the, yeah, whole event today, organizing something around. But you will get to know him later. Yeah, um, I think um, we're like starting here in a, in a, in a smaller round. Um, that's also kind of a um, idea that we all sit around together on a, it's not a round table, it's a rectangular table, but uh, it's the idea of a round table. And um, we will start um, with, um, A, a lecture by Helena Dudova, um, but um, before I um, introduce Helena, I would like to, to make some, some general remarks about um, the two days topic and about um, also maybe a little bit about the two festivals we are part of. So um, we can do this together if you want, so then I would um, maybe say something about the Triennale and do, you would say something about the Rebauhaus Festival and then, and then I would say something about the soup and so on and then and the drinks and how we go on and, and, then, and, then, and then I introduce you and then you... S okay, good, okay. So then, um, yeah, then maybe you start with the Rebauhaus Festival, what it's about and... Um so... Um This was a, this is an initiative uh, we started uh, with the Goethe Institute in Prague, who is concerned with uh, Central Europe and uh, 100 years of Bauhaus in Central Europe. Mm, we kind of uh, did a tour uh, on the different Bauhaus venues with a, a group of uh, researchers, curators uh, from the region, and then out of it we developed a program uh, of, um, of various programs and formats. Um, 
starting with his uh, like twin symposia. Uh, there is an installation of the Bauhaus windows uh, called Bauhaus Twins in, in Ostrava, in Plato Ostrava, uh, which is uh, placed there by Robert, and that installation is placed there uh, for the whole year. Um, then, uh, so there is like this uh, interesting story that the, the Plato Ostrava is actually located in the former Bauhaus do-it-yourself market. So uh, we have like this contrast of the Bauhaus do-it-yourself and the sort of original Bauhaus windows from the Bauhaus Dessau. Um, it's like a kind of a joke what you can't do here in Germany, but what you can do obviously in the Czech Republic. So and, and, and it's, it, it's said that it's the first home improvement market opened after the fall of the Iron Curtain on the former um, East yeah, block and, and the building ground. is being reused, like just the sort of uh, shell of the building is being reused for, for an art uh, Kunsthalle or an art gallery. Um, then we have, um, then there is these uh, two symposia. One was on emancipation in, in Berlin, uh, in, in this on like female and architecture. Uh, one was in Berlin in this like more political and societal um, um, Context uh, with uh, done uh, organized with the uh, TU Berlin uh, with the Faculty of Gender Studies, Professor Sus Sabine Hark, mm, and the second symposium we have in, in Prague on the 31st and 1st of November. It's organized in co collaboration with uh, the TU Dresden with Professor Mary Pepchinski. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, in, in, in uh, Prague we had. Um, uh, Mr. Volker Stab, who was speaking about the new Bauhaus Museum, um, and uh, to confront it with a functionalist perspective, we also had uh, Sabine Hein speaking about um, <coughs> uh, Karl Teiger, uh, the theoretician and um, architecture and art theoretician, and as well um, we had a, um, a preview of the uh, Bauhaus virtual reality, which was um, also um, done by Robert. Yeah, so I think that's the Rebauhaus. Uh, yeah. It's, a, yeah, it's a series of events also in Ostrava. There are summer schools on the Bauhaus and yeah. Yeah, um, yeah the, the, Bau, the virtual Bauhaus you will also be able to experience here maybe later in the break. Um, it's a, a virtual tour through the Bauhaus Tesso and um, also like initiated by the Goethe Institute. But um, maybe just like some remarks about um, the Rebauhaus Festival, what, what the idea behind was. Um, we, the, the Goethe Institute actually, I think, um, Jakob Racek figured that in all these preparations there was not so much a focus on the, on the Central European um, uh, uh, context. And so the idea that, and I think all it was uh, the, the protagonists we invited first had um, really confirmed that that um, that um, the, there is quite a big interest. There is quite a a, a large variety of um, actors, but um, it's not so much understood that there is actually a. a a, yeah, a, a relevant cradle or a, a major cradle of this modernism um, actually um, based on this um, Central European context. And I think we, this, this was quite true, like throughout uh, all the whole Bauhaus year, there was not so much about, um, there was some, some um, of course, uh, conferences, but it, it, like in the, the, in the main focus, the, the Central European perspective was a little bit neglected. And um, I think this was like um, the main, the main uh, driver for the, for the Goethe Institute to initiate it and also to build it on such a, um, a bottom-up uh, level. Um, so we are like, we're really sitting together over one year and then in the end, um, these relocations and these events um, emerged out of that. So um, the, the, the basic idea, and maybe you read it in the, in the, in the program, is uh, also like to confront these uh, developments of modernism, of functionalism in, in the interwar period in, uh, in, the, in, uh, in, in Czechoslovakia and in, in Central Europe with the, with the developments, um, with the development in Germany. Um, uh, and also with the social development of the time, with the uh, founding of um, the modern states like the Weimar Republic and the Czechoslovakian Republic, and um, 
also to question and or mainly uh, as a main focus to question what is the different uh, what was the different reception of that um, what was the different kind of identification with the functionalist uh, movement and also with modernism in uh, the, uh, the central european countries and why it, it can be said that there is a different uh, difference in this reception in um, in Germany and also in uh, compared to um, uh, Czechoslovakia of those days, and um, uh, we we took that um, topic and um, as we were like um, uh, planning this symposium, why we are here today, and um, what we want to ask today is not only um, our question is not only the interwar uh, period, but also like the time. Uh, after the Second World War, the post-war period, um, where we had um, in East and uh, West Germany a quite similar Bauhaus debate, yeah, like a debate about functionalism, like on, on the West uh, German side, uh, initiated by this uh, polemic text uh, from uh, Ru uh, Rudolf Schwarz. And uh, on the Eastern side, we had um, this kind of backlash, I would call it, uh, from ne neoclassicist architecture and um, uh, what we can read very well in the book from Andreas Schetzke um, from uh, Bauhaus zu Stalin Allee, but we will have a very um, interesting insight to, to that um, case uh, by Thilo Hilpert uh, tonight. So, and um, what, we, what we want to do is like also to ask, okay, why is it um, was happening like that uh, in the post-war uh, times in the 50s? And um, also want to compare it, we want to compare it to the uh, Czech, uh, Czechoslovakian discussion. Um, we assume there was a different um, perception also in the post-war um, uh, period. And, um, but uh, I think that's how far we will go with our uh, contributions today. So for our uh, final discussion in the evening, um, we will um, maybe have to yeah, jump in in the 70s and um, talk about um, yeah uh, this uh, taking up the the heritage then again um, also like in East and um, West Germany and um, I'm curious to learn about uh, the, the the Czech Slovakian the Czech perspective on that and yeah and then somehow we will probably end here in 2019 so that would be maybe the the idea of the agenda um, for today and. Um, yeah, in between we will have um, Simone Hein, and she will do a kind of a Begriffsbestimmung functionalism, so a, a definition of functionalism. We're very curious on that as well. Um, so that may be um, about the two days agenda. Let me just um, say some few words about the Triennale der Moderne, because it's, already, it's very important to mention that as well, especially in that context, because um, as this year was mainly about Bauhaus, the Triennale der Moderne is about um, modernism in a wider perspective, and especially in Berlin, um, the, the heritage of modernism is very broad. Um, we managed to get together like uh, around 20 institutions um, in this Triennale this year, um, which uh, will uh, perform 115 events um, that's a lot, and not, of course not all of these 115 events will take uh, place on this weekend. Um, so we, you, will, um, you have this golden program brochure, you will see that there is also events like um, actually until the end of the year. And um, the, the special thing to mention about the Triennale is that it's happening yeah, every three years, and um, it's happening not only in uh, Berlin, it's happening in Weimar and in Dessau. Um, here we have um, Christine Irgang from the Bauhaus Foundation Dessau. She's the coordinator for the Triennale in Dessau. And um, we had uh, the opening here in Berlin um, on uh, Thursday in the uh, Musikinstrumente Museum, a, a symposium curated by the Kunstbibliothek um, by um, Mrs. Blauert. Um, which was a quite interesting start in the Triennale and already gave an, um, a deep insight in this variety and this rich heritage we have here in Berlin. 
And yeah, and to our today focus is to widen that horizon uh, a little bit more to the Central European perspective. So we're very happy that we are, a we are able, able to do this symposium in this framework of the both um, festivals. So one founded by the Goethe Institute and by the German Agency for Citizenship Education and the Bundesstiftung Baukultur. And uh, that's for the Rebauhaus uh, uh, Festival. And um, the Triennale is this year happening with the support of the Lotto Stiftung in Berlin, the first time, which we are very happy that this um, was possible to achieve in this network. So um, that's uh, the short introduction. Um, I'm also doing that in such a short but also like informative way because I have one more important information we are recording the whole event today, uh, all contributions. That's also important to know for you because of the new um, data, personal data protection law. So it will be, I don't know if that's the right translation, um, but uh, we will record all that. So it will be also like for our viewers, for later viewers and for a broader audience, and they need to know um, what this is about.